When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. Oh, well, well, well. Look who it is. Oh, it's podcast day, you old bastard. How you doing? <laughs> Man, I'm, I just, you know, look forward to, to, there's nothing more I look forward to than being called old and, um, <laughs> by you by only you. by me but i've been excited about it man hey um happy late saint patrick's day i've got my saint patrick's day polo on and it reminded me it reminds me of the first time you guys came to visit us in mobile we took yeah. you guys to callahan's irish pub irish social club and man what a what a day you remember that yeah, I mean, it was a great couple of days. We didn't go right to Callahan's, though. You know, we hopped on the golf cart. We went over to get some mimosas. Um, yeah. I think I think it was like a Thursday. No, it was a Friday. It was definitely a Friday. Yeah, because we were there Friday, Saturday. Got some mimosas, and then you were just like, uh, I th- we didn't even know, but you were like, did you know that Mobile's in Open Container City? And we were like, I don't know what that is. We, those don't exist <laughs> in, in where we live. You can't and walk we, outside of an establishment with a even a plastic cup full of no, alcohol. No, the the workaround to that is when you have little kids, they get the uh the little kids cups at the restaurant. So you just pour whatever's left in the little kid cup and then you can walk around <laughs> with that. <laughs> um but no, you can't walk around outside. So then you know we left we left there and then you were like, Hey, you want to grab some margaritas? We were like, Yeah, that sounds great. And then we just ordered margaritas and just kept walking down the road. Yeah, it was a walk squirrels. up bar. It was a walk up bar, but it was at an it was at a restaurant called Debris, which I love. Yeah, they have good food, but those margaritas they got that sea foam, oh, um, and they were just gorgeous. so good. I've you I know, mean, I've been craving those. Really? Well, I mean, I know where to go to get them. Just I know, but I it's here. the you know get into mobiles kind of a. It's like a three-stop journey. Yeah, um, yeah you can't but, get anywhere. Uh, you can't get anywhere out of Mobile without a without a stop at Atlanta or Dallas or Houston. You gotta you gotta yeah. stop there before you get anywhere else. But man, although, that go ahead. Although they just added flights from New York to Pensacola, which is only about an hour from you. So yeah, might might have to figure out how we're gonna do that. Yeah, that was exciting, and that starts – it hasn't started yet, I don't think. No, you, it has started, but they also added flights from Pensacola to Dulles, which is Washington, D.C. So, okay. I mean, the possibilities are endless, you know what I mean? We just got to make it happen. Yeah, well – I also yeah. remember a TikTok that – speaking of the to-go drinks, I remember a TikTok <laughs> where the guy – he ordered like a to-go thing for his hamburger <laughs> – poured his daiquiri in there and then stuck the straw in the top of the to-go thing. It looked like a hamburger <laughs> with a straw, a hamburger container with a straw coming out of the top. Those are well, the real innovators. Yeah, they really are. Speaking of, uh, you know, open container cities, I really wish that y'all were going to be joining us in Savannah in oh. about 10 days. Oh man. I love Savannah. Yeah. I love Savannah and I love, um, because it reminds me of Mobile. It really does. The the old, old oak trees. Oh, man. Just, and it's it's a super old city. You know, Mobile was established in 1702 or 1703. I can't remember. But that's, I mean, Savannah's old like that, too. Savannah yeah. reminds me of, like, that movie the or the story. The book, The uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. That's what I think about when I think about Savannah. Well, I've never been. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to going, you know, um, we are doing a one night in Charleston. Then we're going to drive down to Savannah and it's going to be a grand old time. I wish I was going to, to uh, Charleston with you guys. We, that's one of the places we want to go, but you've been to Charleston. We have, and we loved it so much that we decided to fly into Charleston to make our way to Savannah and do one night in Charleston. 
Awesome. Well, back to the, that day we were hanging out, you know, I had planned to work and I was at work before you guys got into mobile <clears throat> and I left early and I was dealing with something at work, some, some pain in the ass thing that was just consuming my attention. And I was going to come down there and you guys were going to go to the Airbnb wash a load of laundry or something and, and take a nap or something before we hung out. But it ended up being, I just said, screw it, man. I'm just going to, I'm going to get on there and hang out with you guys and, and try to forget about what was going on at work. And we had just a, man, just a spontaneous great time. And then it turned into, you know, three days of having a good time, but it, it made me forget about what I was dealing with at work and, <clears throat> you know, one of the things when you become a plumbing business owner that you, you don't really think about, or I didn't really think about in the beginning was you really have to have a reason why you're doing what you're doing. We call it your why, oddly enough, but man, you really do get blindsided by some things. And I think that that's one of the things that, I have the kind of, even though I get made fun of by you and Richard and Laura and whoever comes along because <laughs> I've been around, I just, man, I've had some things happen to me that I just didn't think that was, that was going to happen. And I never would have believed that it was going to happen, you know, and you have to have a strong enough reason for doing what, what you're doing, being an entrepreneur and not just owning a job to to help you get off the off the map, you know, of life. So I want to talk about that for a little bit. You know, like my initial thought when I went into business as it pertains to like hiring help and growing help, I mean growing help, growing the business, I just thought <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that if I just did everything myself, there wouldn't be any problems. There would not be any headaches that I couldn't deal with because I'm the best plumber. I know, like I said before and whatever comes down the pipe, I'll just deal with it. I won't have any callbacks. Does that sound stupid and crazy? Like now that you've been in business for for a few years? No, it doesn't. You know, I was very much, I'm going to do everything myself. And I mean, everything short of like accounting, right? Like, filing my taxes you know it was like i'm just gonna do everything myself because then i know that there's not gonna be any mess ups right i'm gonna answer the phones myself i'm gonna call back the customers myself i'm gonna do the jobs myself um, i'm gonna make the material list um and some of those things are harder to get over than others right like i found myself at some point where i had let everything go except for the boiler installs and the water and sewer main replacements because I didn't trust anyone else to run a machine. Mm -hmm. um, and then I let go of the boiler installs because I knew that they were in good hands because the guy that was doing them, I had trained from the time he was like 18 um, and I knew he was going to do it right, but I still, I still couldn't get over that hump of trusting someone to run the machine. Yeah. Um, until... Well, it's scary. I mean, if you have, if you have one fiber optic line that's hit, I mean, I've heard it's like a, it's like a, a nightmare that I don't know how true it is. I've heard so many urban legends about how much it costs. If you hit a fiber optic line, I don't oh, even know what it costs. I don't want to know. Dude. Well, my cousin, I'll give you a quick synopsis. We have a, we have a hydraulic mole so we could shoot new water mains underground and only have to dig one hole, mm -hmm. um, which is great. It's a great selling point, right? Like we're not going to disturb your landscaping. We're not going to have to cut up concrete. We're not going to have to destroy your property. We're just going to take one little hole, the curb and shoot it into the basement, um, which is awesome when it works. Um, mm -hmm. But my cousin one time mold through a, uh, a two inch gas service feed oh, in the street. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to say the price, and this is going back, probably close to 10 years now um 
and I want to say the price on that was about twenty five grand. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, for them to come dig a hole and repair the gas line. I mean, we're talking two couplings, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it's pricey. So, you know, it was hard to kind of get over that hump, but, you know, it really just came to, uh, I don't want to be out there, right? I got other stuff to do. It sets me back a whole day if I'm out there or two days if something goes wrong or whatever. Um, so it was just better to, uh, it was better to let go. And, you know, I found one guy that I trust. And then once you trust that one guy, it's easier to trust the second guy and the third guy, right? Um, yeah. That's true because you find different things to do with your time that are more productive than being out there on the machine. Yeah. Like recording a podcast. Mm. Yes, sir. And listen, like the, I remember the first time I ever had something happen that gave me the first taste of things are going to happen that are out of my control that are going to cost me money and cause heartache and extreme anxiety. Like there is no escaping it. So the first time that happened, we were working for a builder, you know, like, like many other plumbing business owners. I started off in new construction. We were working for a builder. We were finishing up a spec house <clears throat> Um, we call spec houses houses that don't have an owner yet. They're just built and, and are put up for sale. And he had an open house that weekend. And he called me Monday and he said, hey, um, real country guy. Hey, man, um, you might want to call your insurance company. And right then, like I knew, like, oh, my gosh, what is it just freaked me out. And I said, wow, what's going on? He said, well. Somebody flushed the toilet in the house this weekend and and um, it didn't stop running and it just started overflowing um, and it got all over the hardwood floors. And I was like, oh, man. And so it, it, everything was running through my mind. Like, I don't want to call my insurance company because they might drop me. When you don't have any experience to draw from, everything is a huge deal until you go through it. So um, I was petrified for the rest of the week. And he said, I'll let, I'll let you know what happens. And it turns out in this particular instance that nobody turned the power on to the grinder pump. And what happened was they kept flushing the toilet and mm -hmm. the, the grinder pump never turned on. So that ended up being not my fault. So he magically found a way to not call an insurance company. You know what I mean? Like he figured it out. So maybe he went back to the flooring vendor and, you know, yeah. did, whatever it was, it, it, got dealt with without my involvement. But, you know, shortly after that, when I was in business, one of the things that I could do was I could build a shop and take advantage of a tax benefit called the Go Zone Tax Relief. Um, of course, I've been in business since 2006. This was about 2008. And that was, it, I was I'll tell you right hey, now it was. Yeah. Pause. I was in high school. Go ahead. Man. Keep 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 on keeping on. You suck, dude. <laughs> I um, know I do. <laughs> so you were in high school, um, probably asleep in the back of the classroom, and I was building a shop just in hindsight, it was like right before the big housing market crash. Like I was busy enough to feel like I could build a shop. My accountant said, Hey, there's a there's a tax benefit you can take advantage of. You build a shop and you whatever you spend on it, you don't have to you can you can write that all off as in or something. You can write all that off, what it costs. So I did that, man. Things were great. And then the the housing market took its toll on my business and I had to sell that shop. And I've told the story before. It was a terrible time. I was scared to death I was going to go bankrupt. But for the purposes of this sto story. The buyer came along, paid cash for the building, wanted to close in uh, 10 days or less. I was free from the from the the burden of owing that money, that that monthly mortgage. Got it all closed. And then the tax season that year, I found out that if you sell a building after having taken advantage of that tax credit, you have to recapture that income that you got when you sold the building. 
So I had to pay taxes on all of that. And it just, it was devastating. Like I was, I, I just couldn't get ahead. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you lose that money, you get it back, you get yourself out of it, you maneuver away to sell the building. And then now you owe this money because you took advantage of this. And it was like, man, is it even worth it? Is it even worth being in business if I just keep getting hit? But you know, again, you have to have a strong enough reason for doing what you're doing, you know? And we talked about our reasons yeah. why they change as we go along. Yeah. And it needs to be worth it. Um, and, you know, just like that first time, you know, you tell the story about when you were at Disney World, but like that first time that it's like, you know, oh, cr crap, man, I forgot about this $20,000 invoice to the supply house right um yeah. because it's it's really it's always in the beginning right when you're doing the new construction you're doing all this stuff it's it's very much borrowing from peter to pay paul right um yeah. it's like waiting on that deposit from that next new construction job to be able to pay for the to be able to pay for the material invoices from the job before right because it's just the nature of business if you don't have cash flow coming in steadily it's going to be waiting 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 okay big payday great everything's fine just like with you selling your shop right everything's yeah. fine until it, until it's not right so that yeah. first time you that first time for me it's like you know everything's fine we're doing you know we're doing service work we're doing service work then we take on a house right and mm -hmm. it's very easily you could rack up eight nine ten grand worth of material on that job um and now we're like waiting on that final payment to be able to pay that off but before that final payment, now we have to take on another house, right? So we can get that deposit to pay that off. And it's it's like, I joke around that it's like math that doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, um, math. math. <laughs> yeah, the math ain't math thing because your margins are so slim on those types of jobs that it's like, that's that's what people don't understand is like the velocity of money that the longer you can hold on to money, the more money you can make with the money you're holding on to. Um, but if you ain't got any money that you're holding on to, you're actually losing that money. Yeah. Um, if it's so already spent you... before it even goes in the, can the yeah. bank. Account. <laughs> yeah. So the longer you go in between those installment payments, right? It's like, crap, man. I'm, I, I, every, it's like every couple of days you lose a percentage. And if you're working at 4% profit, it doesn't take that many days to run out of profit on that job. Right. Yeah. You're just staying in front of that big, you know, like in the Indiana Jones movies, which is older than you probably, but there's a huge, oh, I've, bowl, I've seen them. It's okay. It. Yeah. I'm well, a big, what, I'm a big fan of watching classic movies. Well, you remember in that movie that the big boulders like rolling after Indiana Jones? Yeah. That's what it's like trying to stay in front of that huge supply house bill. Um, but you know, th these stories that I'm that I'm telling you are are coming from somebody that thought not nothing is going to happen because I'm going to do everything myself. You know, and it sh and it didn't take long. Like I told a story about when I first started my business, that old electrician was like, congratulations on going in business. You've never been mm -hmm. blindsided before and started mm -hmm. laughing. And I didn't know what the, what the hell he was laughing at. And it didn't take long because I've been blindsided over and over. And, and that's the whole purpose of having a reason why. Like I remember, and, and you can relate to this, doing a huge custom house. Everybody thinks at first, if I can just get that huge custom house, man, I, I'll make it. Well, I was doing a huge custom house for uh, one of the big premier builders around town. And it was a Friday afternoon and I was in the master shower. You know, when you do those big custom human car washes of a master shower, you just, you just, you're in there for like almost a day sometimes just trying to figure yeah. out how does, how does all this work? Well, I had gotten started on it and it got up in the day and I was ready to go home. And I was missing a part, something, something, I had to go back and get something, something was, was not in the box, something to that effect. Um, and I, in those, in those Delta multi-choice shower valve bodies, you can have the test cap in there and not have the, the cartridge in there, right? Because it stays mm -hmm. throughout the, the whole building process. So that was in the, in the valve body and I didn't have what I needed for the shower head. So I had already taken the shower head nipple out 
And I was like, man, I'll just turn the water off to the house. It's Friday afternoon. Just nobody lives here. No, nothing's going to happen. And that ended up being one of the most expensive mistakes I've made. So this is what happened. I left the shower head nipple laying on the bench in the shower. I went outside and turned the secondary shutoff valve off at the house. And I just thought in my mind, I'll just be back Monday morning and, and do the, the shower head Saturday morning, the brick masons came over and they were doing some work to finish up outside they turned the water onto the house yeah. and they never thought about it again until water was running out the front door down the um, sidewalk. And I got a call from the lady, you know, you get to know the homeowners throughout the process and she was mm -hmm. freaking out, man. And this, this was a super custom house. I mean, it had custom everything and the least of which were the custom wood floors that were made out of some, I don't know what bamboo or some shit. And they all had to be ripped up. And the, the homeowner made a case for, Hey, you guys, all this stuff was from the same batch. The top floor and the bottom floor was from the same batch. Now that we're ripping up the bottom, you may as well rip up the top too, because it's not going to match. And I've, the insurance company did it and they dropped me after they paid Oof. that huge claim. And Oof. I was beside myself. I was like, no man, like this is, this can't be my fault. This is not our fault. The bricklayers, they turned the, the water on. I, they shouldn't have turned the water on. And that is a, that is your, that is a lost cause to try to, once something like that happens and the insurance companies get involved, you may as well just, wait on word because that's that's what's going to happen they don't care if it's your fault or not they're going to take the cheapest you know the most the cost what is it called the most cost effective way out of the situation yeah and i was devastated for a while i just god like how could this happen you know yeah i've never done something quite that bad but i did have a similar you know we were building like a 14 million dollar house um and you know, when you're doing your, I don't know how they do it down by you, but, um, can you, can y'all do smoke tests? Yeah. Okay. So we could do smoke tests as well, but no inspectors accept smoke tests. Mm -hmm. Um, so well, I thought you, you meant know, like if you're looking for a sewage smell. Or no, something, no, I'm saying for like inspection. the rough inspection on your, on oh, your no, we can't. so we have to, we have to put a, a ball in the sewer line and then we got to pump we got to put water in all the way up through the roof. Yeah. Make sure that nothing's leaking. Um, and I had, you know, the house wasn't done or nothing yet, but we had, um, we had a ball that decided to not hold, you know, put the test. I, I learned that less than the blow up ball. You talking about? Yeah. We put the blow up ball in on like, you know, we were done. It's a Friday. Um, and I don't know if it was my fault or my helper's fault or whatever it is. But we never dropped the test. Um, and it let go and flooded out uh two 75 gallon power vent water heaters in the basement, um, mm -hmm. burnt out the sump pump, took out a washer and dryer in the basement. Um, so luckily we didn't get insurance involved. It wasn't, you know, most of the stuff that was affected was plumbing related stuff, right? So it was just yeah. like, hey, we'll we'll put in new water heaters, not you know that was the most cost effective thing right rather than paying the deductible worry about getting dropped all that but um but it still was like one of those lessons you have to learn is like and maybe part of that's why it's like i'm just gonna do every, everything myself right yeah because you get scared I'm pretty, you're scared to touch anything yeah i'm pretty sure in that situation it was like i told my helper hey go drop the test i'm gonna do whatever i'm gonna clean up i'm gonna whatever i was doing and i think he forgot to do it and uh that was a nightmare. Yeah. And things are going to happen. They are going to happen. There is no such thing as having just a perfect run of never making a mistake. But I really thought that that could happen. When I went into business, I thought this is not going to happen to me because I'm going to be on top of everything. Um, And it, you know, I had a situation too, where one of my guys was under, he was in the, the office of an apartment complex, you know, like the leasing office. And he was fixing a 
we'll just say a supply line under the the break room um, uh, sink, and he was under there, and it was CPVC, and he pulled his elbow back, and his elbow just sheared off the the stop. It was on a male adapter, and he didn't know where the shutoff was for that leasing office, and he called me in a sheer panic. I was at the office and he's like, dude, I can't get the water shut off. It's going everywhere. And that's the last thing I wanted to hear, you know? And uh, I said, man, the only thing I can do is run this big square head meter key to you and shut the whole apartment complex down. But I'm across town. He said, man, come on. I don't have a, I don't have any other option. And when I pulled up, water was running right down the sidewalk, you know, and it flooded the whole office. Just, you know, like I said, man, that and that that wasn't that wasn't a technician who is who is it's not part of his characteristic to be careless. He just thought he was going in there to do something really quickly and didn't find out where to shut the water off. I mean, I've done it. I think any any plumber that's been doing this for a long time has done yeah. that kind of thing. It just it was the wrong day to not look for a shutoff valve, because, <laughs> you know, and we got out of that too. I mean, the, the water, it was all tile floor. The water came out the front door. We put blowers in there and, and thankfully we never, we never, you know, had to pay for anything. Nothing was really damaged, but the, just the sheer hair of somebody saying, get over here, man. I got We got to shut the whole apartment complex down, you know, but well, the other thing that leads me to is like, you know, you end up like almost micromanaging your guys and telling them the same thing over and over again. Like one of my biggest fears when I first started hiring guys, because I made the mistake once I only made the mistake once, but I made the mistake once of not knocking the knockout plug out of a garbage disposal mm -hmm. and the dishwasher turns on and freaking floods the whole kitchen. And I only made the mistake once, but then it's like, every time there's a call for a garbage disposal, it's like, knock out the knockout plug, make sure you're not yeah. out the knockout plug. And then your guys get tired of hearing it. They're like, I know how to do my job. Like, right. Leave me alone. That's a dude. real thing that happens though. It is. You don't want it to be everybody's first time on your dime. You know what I mean? Like, correct. Like when, if, if somebody ever has the misfortune of missing a crimp ring, um, Oof. I've done that before. And it's like, Hey, make sure on this repipe, please make sure you check every crimp ring. And you say that over and over again. And like you said, the guys are like, dude, I know what I'm doing. But yeah. and it comes out of a out of a place of, man, I just don't want it to happen. I don't want the yeah. things that have happened to me to happen to you. Or hey, make sure you fill the water heater before you turn the electric back on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. How many times I've told them that? And I still had one guy forget to turn to fill the heater before he turned the electric back on, even though I told them three times. So I mean, there's a place for where we're coming from as the business owner. But from their point of view, like I've also been on the other side of it where it's like, you know what, the guy I was working for when I forgot to knock out the garbage disposal, it was like, you never hear the end of it. Right. Yeah. And then it's, you know, <laughs> every time they send you to a call, Oh, make sure you do this. Oh, make sure you do that. And it's like, dude, I'm not an idiot. It was just a mistake, you know? Yeah. And the list of things that you could say that about in plumbing is endless everything you touch can potentially flood a house if you don't do this right or if you don't do mm -hmm. this and, and you, you, it can drive you crazy let's face it home service companies are a dime a dozen and mrs jones has many to choose from now it may not be pc but she does judge a book by its cover that's why there's kick charge the industry's leading and most awarded branding and truck wrap design agency who has been instrumental in getting home service providers noticed for over 20 years. And right now, Kick Charge is offering a $500 rebate to all Coach's Corner listeners. To get more information, go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash kick charge and start getting noticed today. I got one more story for you. All right, go ahead. We were, uh, I mean, I got an arsenal of stories. I've been in business <laughs> for a long, long time, but. I think the more stories I tell, people are like, well, damn, man, this dude. <laughs> no, okay, how, is, so how is this dude still in business? <laughs> I would have quit a long time ago. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to round it out to hopefully make sense, you know? So we were, uh, we have a, we have a customer that is a, a prominent 
uh, politician in town has gone. He's 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 a big deal. His his house is a big deal. It's a huge, beautiful house, and we were called over there to change the water heater out, which was upstairs in the attic. One of at least two that I know of upstairs, and <clears throat> we did that. Dude, if you flooded this guy's house again, I'm just going to end the episode. Gotta, <laughs> don't jump to the end. Don't jump to the end. You gotta you gotta feel what I felt. All right, I'm so, gonna feel it. Uh, his wife called, Hey, we got, you know, we need this water heater changed. We change the water heater. Um, we crimp all the crimps and there is a def Well, she calls back. Wait, how do I, how do I build this story up? Okay. So we get them hot water. Everything's fine. They call back the next day. Hey, this, this, um, uh, this crimp ring is leaking and um, the same guy goes back. He's like, man, I, I crimped this. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'll cut it out, put another one back up. He used, he's using the same bag of crimp rings that he bought. Right. So, and thank God he bought that particular bag of crimp rings for that job. And <clears throat> so he crimped it back. Everything's fine. She calls back the next evening and there's water running out of the ceiling. I mean, I'm, it is bad. And, and another one of my texts went over there. And, you know, when you go into somebody's house where there's water actively running out of the ceiling, it's the third floor. So it's made its way all the way down. It's the whole house is just, this is the worst thing that's, well, I don't want to jinx myself. This was bad. <laughs> um, she's freaking out. And he goes upstairs and the the whole piece of PEX and everything had come off the adapter and the, the crimp ring was crimped. So I said I say that 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 kind of story, I say that because things that you didn't even do that aren't even your fault are going to be they're they're going to involve you and you're just gonna have to get through it. Because that crimp ring company, it was a long, drawn out ordeal and they found a way out of it and my insurance had to pay for it you know because they send you when you buy crimpers they send you with that gauge and you can you can make sure that every crimp ring is gauged right but they're going to find a way to say well this mm. was like a a thousandth of an inch or whatever yeah it or, wasn't what tool did, or what tool did you use to crimp it you didn't use our tool right, right? so right, there's now the always new thing a way is, out the new thing is we you know we use expansion packs because I don't like the crimp rings. Mm -hmm. Um so there's a prominent manufacturer of expansion packs um that has done it for oh man, I've been using expansion packs since 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. Um and it's always been the same manufacturer, but their patent just expired, which allows other people to start manufacturing the same thing, right? Yeah. Um and now you run into an issue where if you use their pipe and their rings, but someone else is fitting, voids the warranty. Yeah, or and I can use, see why they would do that because they yeah. they they are looking for a way out of things. Yeah, or if you use their pipe and their fittings, but someone else's ring, voids the warranty. Yeah. So it, there's ways out of it for those companies. There's no way out of it for you. You're the end. There's you're no the end way user. out because you have insurance. Hey, and look, so, so this guy was running for office. He was, he won in the, in the span of, of his house being flooded a couple days later, he won the election. And I think on the way out of like getting all his collectibles and taking them out so they wouldn't be ruined, I think he fell and chipped his tooth. So this dude was giving did he his, blame, did he blame you in his acceptance wait, wait, speech? Wait, dude, wait. So he is giving his acceptance speech. He won the the race and I was watching it because I knew I was like, oh my gosh, this dude's had the worst week ever. And we flooded his house. I mean, we can say it was the defective crimp ring, but in the court of public opinion, this dude is about to say, please don't say what I think you're going to say. And he's like, Oh, I'm just so thankful. He was thanking everybody. And I was like, yes, yeah, just stay on that path. Don't, don't, don't say Wally Plumbing. And he said, man, it's just been a, it's just been a rough week. You know, my house got flooded. 
And I, I saw it unfolding right in front of my eyes. And he said, I chipped my tooth. And he didn't say us. So I was like, oh, my gosh, dude, thank you so much, man. I love you. <laughs> he didn't say us. Thank God. But, you know, and that's that wasn't even our fault, man. It wasn't. But we did, you know, I had to go back over there in the midst of, I mean, they had to redo sheetrock. The insulation, it was that newspaper insulation. It, you know, got heavy and the sheetrock fell off the ceiling. It was an absolute disaster. <laughs> you remember? You remember on Home Alone whenever he rigged up that fan where the dude yeah. got glue on his face and he pulled the fan and it blew all over. That's what that's what the living room looked like. Uh, but I don't. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you, man. I mean, dude, and I say all these things and I tell all these stories because I'm still here and we're we're successful and our plumbing company is thriving. But if I would just if I would just been like, man, this is too hard. Um, I would have been three feet from gold. You know what I mean? I would have been three feet from gold because things are going to happen, but you just have to have the mindset that you're going to get through it. And if you may not even see a way through it, you may think, oh, this is the one that's going to take me out, but just keep, you know, keep moving, just keep going forward. Um, because it's not going to be the thing that takes you out. You are going to be okay. And you just have to trust that and, you know, now looking back at all the things that have happened and I'm 45 years old, I've been in business for 16, 17 years, man, there are plenty of reasons to quit, but you just have to have a big enough reason to keep going and it will pay off. And you have to trust that even though you can't see it yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't have said it any better. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. And that that's why it's so important to in module two to figure out your why. Cause it's like, you're going to need that, man. You're going to need that gonna over need and it. over and over again to propel you forward. Um, and it takes a certain type of person to want to continually deal with those types of things, right? Um, yeah. On the way up, right? Because on the way up, it's, I f you know, and hopefully it's different for everybody else. But for me, there was, I felt like there were a lot more failures, whether whether that's monetarily or emotionally, um, or physically, right? It's, I feel like there's a lot more failures than there are wins. Cause you have to, I mean, there's an old saying, right? You know, you just have to learn things the hard way and, um, it can get expensive that way. It can, but you know, I had to learn a lot of things the hard way. So hopefully no one else has to, you know, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of this, right? That's the beauty of this podcast of this, the coaching program of like everything. It's just like, maybe you could avoid some of the mistakes we made, right? Just yeah. one or two of them, at least. Yeah. One or two. Don't flood That's a politician's all... house. Like yeah. just right. Hold just... On. Right before his victory speech. <laughs> if he would have lost, I believe I would have been, my cover would have been blown. It'd been yeah. like, it'd been like, Oh man, I, I lost I because of Tony Wally. Wally plumbing. <laughs> and I chipped my tooth. Anyway, it was Tony himself. Don't call them. On that note, let's get out of here. All right, man. Catch you later. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below. And make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.